I got a phone call one day. A lady said, uh, my son, when I get up in the morning, he's drawn at least 100 drawings. And I said, bring him over, because I was an art teacher. I taught art in my studio to private students. And I opened my door, and there's a three-year-old boy standing on my steps with his mother. She brought him in. I'm trying to figure out how to tell her I can't do this because he's too young. I teach oil painting. I said, okay, come up to my studio. And I took him up to my studio, and all the time I'm thinking, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? And as we went to my studio, Paul would stop in front of my paintings. I had big paintings like this, and he would just, his mouth was open and his eyes were just devouring these paintings. So I took him into the studio, and I said, well, he's a little young, and his mother said, well, I can stay here with him. And I said, no, if I teach him, you have to go. And she said, oh no, I can't do that. We've never left Paul alone with a babysitter or anyone. And I said, well, then I can't teach him. And I looked at Paul and he had this funny look on his face and he was looking at my paintings and I walked over to him and I said, do you want to learn to paint? And he said, paint like this? And I said, well, you paint the way you paint, but you have to stay with me by yourself. Your mother has to go home. There's a telephone. If you get home, if you want your mama to come and get you, you can call her on the telephone. And his face just lit up and I said, but if you do, you can't never come back. And he looks over at his mom and he said, bye mom. I taught him up until he went away to college at CCAD in Columbus. Mentoring isn't just for a little while, it can last a lifetime. When I look at his work, I see so much empathy for other people. It's like when he paints a person, he looks into their eyes and he sees their soul. I believe he is truly a modern day master. And I think eventually that will be recognized because his work is unbelievable. I was super excited because I knew Paul's work was gonna be here. So I actually got here early so that I could do pictures. I was sending them to a friend of mine that couldn't be here. I love his colors, I love his subject. I love how there's parts that are focused, unfocused, and I love the economy of brushstroke. Like that is just something as an artist that I appreciate, and when I see it, it makes me really happy. <laughs> we were coming anyway. Yeah. All together it's so beautiful I'd seen him working on these and I'm in one of the paintings and then he painted my brother and so it's pretty overwhelming to see it all together I met Paul after a, about a year and a half ago he was working on a project and an installation and I I worked with him on helping him uh, it was a puzzle relief puzzle of three different people and then he was doing the Art Against Bullying, I was really interested in it, so I volunteered and I worked in two projects of Art Against Bullying with him. I decided I wanted to go back to painting, and so I started taking art lessons from him on Monday nights. Then he had me pose for one of the paintings, and then I had told him a lot about my brother Alan, who, and his uh, husband who had passed away from AIDS. And I brought a picture and I showed it to him, and 
he was interested in their story, which was a you know a, a beautiful love story that was tragic. I gave him more information, and I brought a picture in, and he painted from it, and it was. They were in one of the first gay parades in San Francisco, and it's a picture from that that was done by a photographer. He took that photograph and has painted it and also chose to use some of the words that they had written to each other. So it's, it's, uh, it's so beautiful, and it's to see it up, it's just, and then watching other people's reaction to it, it's really meaningful and just really beautiful. I love it, Paul. He's my teacher. I've seen him do this work and I'm completely flabbergasted by how he works and what he creates as an artist mentor. He's just so encouraging of everybody being whatever they want to be and expressing whatever is happening for them. And he's never discouraging about doing anything creative. We saw all the work that he was doing, but when you have everything put together like this, it is really amazing. So Paul is an excellent teacher. He can find everything that you have inside of yourself and he will transfer, make you transfer to a canvas, to a drawing or whatever. It's really a pleasure to work with him. I just got into art two years ago and what he says is no matter where I go now in my life, in my career, I'm going to be connected to art. So the Big wheel actually looks more like um, the color wheel, so it looks like I'm looking to my future into art. We were doing our Monday paint session, and the sun was setting, so like the light was really good. And Paul was like, "You know what? You guys are all going to be in the painting, so come outside." And he like kind of posed us and took pictures. It was kind of surreal watching it all come together, cause like I've never been in a somebody else's painting before. So that was really awesome getting to watch like happen. It was really interesting to get to see like the process of, a, of the painting of me in real life. Like that was really cool. One, two, three. It was actually pretty overwhelming for me. I mean, I had seen all of the paintings. I um, witnessed him, you know, conceptualizing the show and um, creating each of the individual pieces. But to see them all together in this context uh, was pretty overwhelming. I feel really proud of him. This painting is um, uh, built on a, a photo reference of me with our dogs. We were walking on Carmel Beach um, right after we moved here over two years ago. We moved here from Ohio. And um, our two whippets, Seamus and Una, Un this is Una, um, we actually lost her this summer. The painting's extra special. We were just exploring and having a lot of fun discovering our new community. It was a leap of faith coming out here, leaving our family and our friends, you know, that was hard, and leaving all that was familiar. You know, we were both born and raised in Ohio. So starting over um, in a new place and um, not knowing anybody and, and, and just really uh, finding our way. It was exciting, um, but there was also a lot of pain. Paul's dad died actually a few months after we moved here. Um, unexpectedly and um, so we've we've had to really you know juggle a lot of emotions a lot of adjustments um, not just the move itself but everything else that kind of goes along with that so um, I think that this whole theme is something that we've been dealing with you know as a couple you know for the past two years this you know moving to our promised land and and discovering the the pieces of it that are wonderful and the pieces of it that are broken and that are not what we expected. But still coming away from the experience happy and um, completely different people for having taken this risk. Inside this gallery, it's amazing. I've been so excited to see it because we've been watching this show evolve in the studio and we've been talking about different pieces. I mean, when he worked on my piece, he didn't ask anything about like, what, what am I doing with it? He just took it. And when it was done, 
I was like, you totally captured this journey that I've been on and that I'm currently on. And he said, yeah, well, let me let me hear about it. So I told him what I thought, then he told me what he was thinking when he was doing it, and it was so meshed. So to see, I, the other thing I really wanted to see in the show was just the, the, uh, the journey, because I knew he prepared it in a way that we could go through it. It wasn't random how he decided to hang the paintings and even how he decided to paint them. He knew he wanted to have this experience, which is really unique. Not that many artists do that kind of dedicated work for a show that says, I'm taking you on this journey. I was so excited about this part right here because it really looks to me like I have been bound and I'm shedding what's keeping me down. And it wasn't, it's not an uncomfortable thing, but it was something that was keeping me from growing and blooming. This is the chaos of all of this with the color. It's sort of this, um, this path that I've been on with my studio and trying to build this business. And the roller coaster being there that it's like, it's, a, it's kind of a jumbled up roller coaster, which is not un untrue from my experience of this work that I've been doing. And then the light is here that I'm, I'm going into this new place while I'm still looking over my shoulder at what I've done and how I can move forward into this new place and this new world. And when I saw the title that he did, Beautiful Passage, I cried. It's like beyond an honor. It's like deeply personal, but um, um, I, I mean, to be interpreted by Paul Richmond is like amazing, amazing feeling. It's not like just seeing a picture of yourself, it's like seeing a picture of something inside you. I mean, it's like very soul connecting. I sat for Paul um, and uh, he took some pictures and we were talking about my experience with being LGBT and, and going back to being a very young man during the um, AIDS epidemic, losing friends, the fear and pain of that era, riding that through to activism, to marriage equality, fighting for that, um, becoming a gay dad, you know, and um, kind of that whole arc of gay experience over those decades. And just the, the depth of experience that 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 I've had that's that's what's in the painting that's what's in my eyes that's what I was thinking about was um, all those past experiences coming together and he titled the peco the painting echoes so it's like that echo of all of those pain loss joy you know accomplishment um, fight and success and and all of that all together and and that's that's what he came up with. The first time I saw it was uh, when Paul was actually working on it because Paul and I are really good friends. We uh, we work on our art projects together every Thursday at Open Ground Studios, and uh, it was already done when I saw it. And oh, I I loved it. I mean, he captured my likeness. The thing that I. I love, I mean, he's got my tattoos in there, you know, that's, uh, and not only that, I mean, of course it's a beautiful painting and everything, all Paul's work is beautiful, he's a wonderful painter, um, but this also has a lot of sentimental meaning to me because Paul and I took a trip to Santa Cruz to the boardwalk so he could get photo references of some of these amusement park scenes that you see. And uh, him and I hung out at the boardwalk that day and just had a blast. I mean, the weather was so beautiful. We, you know, we're just, we're such good friends, you know? And uh, when I look at this painting now, you know, even though the references are collaged, you know, from a different thing, uh, it reminds me of that day when Paul and I were uh, hanging out at the boardwalk while he was getting references for his paintings. I'm so grateful to have Paul as a friend. He's, he's a wonderful guy. He's, very generous. He's an amazing painter and uh, very generous too of spirit. Just after seeing him work on this stuff for so long, 
you know, seeing it all together for the first time. In a way, it was like watching a film for the first time. I got to see the first painting, you know, that he started when he was the boy on the tricycle. And I just kind of worked my way around and, you know, this was the chronological order of how he completed these paintings.